Future represents the result of an asynchronous function in Dart. So to understand what is future, you have to understand the difference between a synchronous operation and an asynchronous operation. And to understand it better, to understand it practically, I have set up an experiment for you. So here is a new Flutter project. So this is the default code. If you execute this, the default app appears. And you are familiar with this, right? If you tap on this button, the variable counter gets incremented and that value is displayed in this text widget. Now we are going to make some changes here to understand the difference between synchronous and asynchronous function. So here inside this file fun.dart, I have added three functions. One named fun async, one fun sync, and one long running task. So inside this function long running task, we are going to perform some long running task. So to simulate a long running operation, I have added multiple for loops here and we are going to pass a large number for the number of iterations so basically this code is going to take a little longer to get executed you don't have to worry much about this code because this does not make any sense other than that this is going to take a little longer so we are going to execute this function once synchronously and once asynchronously and we shall notice the behavior of our app to both of these approaches so here inside this function fun sync, we are going to call this function in a regular way, in a synchronous way. We are simply going to call this function. We shall pass a value, a large number for the parameter. And we are going to return the value returned by this function. So a int an integer will be returned by this function and we shall return it from this function. Inside the asynchronous function fun async, we are going to execute this function in a asynchronous way. And for that, we are going to use the inbuilt function called compute. To this function, as a first argument, we have to pass the name of the function. And as the second argument, we have to pass the parameter that we want to pass as the parameter of this function, of the function that we want to execute. Now, you don't have to worry much about this function. Just keep in mind that this function computes, compute helps us in executing something asynchronously. Now here inside the main.dart file, we are going to make some changes. So once the floating action button is tapped, we are going to call one of these two functions, right? Once we shall call fun sync and once we shall call fun async. And we are going to display a loader during the execution of these functions. So here I have added a boolean show loader, initialize it to false. And here before displaying the text widgets, we are checking the value of this boolean. If it is true, then we are displaying a circular progress indicator. Otherwise, we are displaying the column containing the text widgets. Now we are going to make some changes inside this function increment counter. You can change the name if you wish. But here I am using it as it is. So here inside this function, first we are going to make show loader true and we shall call set state so that the UI gets rebuilt and the loader appears and then we shall call either fun sync or fun async and after calling that function, we are going to make show loader false again to hide the loader and we shall add two print statements, one before calling the function, another after calling the function so that we can get the idea of execution by looking at the console too. And also on the app bar, I'm adding a, an icon button on tapping this in new page will appear. And for that, I have created a separate widget named new page. And inside, we simply have a text widget displaying a text. I have added this just to taste the interactivity of the app. We shall check whether during the process, we can still interact with the app or the app gets frozen. So now let's call the function fun sync and let's load the app and tap on this button. If you take a look at the console, you will see that this first string is getting printed. So the first print statement is getting printed, but the loader 2 is not appearing. And let's try tapping on this button. And you will notice that this is not loading the new page. So the app is frozen. The app is not responsive at this moment. So let us wait for a little. And if you take a look at the console, you will notice that the second print statement 2 got printed. And here on the text widget, we can see the value that is returned by the function long running task so the fu the function the execution has completed at this moment and now if you try tapping on this button the new page appears so basically this synchronous function has blocked the execution and thus our app was not responsive during that time during the during the time when the function was executing so this is the problem with a synchronous function it blocks the execution and if the synchronous function has to perform a long running task then it will make the app irresponsive 
it will freeze the UI. So this is not an expected behavior, right? And thus we need asynchronous functions in such a case. So whenever we need to perform any long running task, we have to use asynchronous functions. They does not block the execution. The execution of the function will continue parallelly and the normal execution will continue. So give it a try. Instead of calling fun sync, call fun async. Add the keyword await in front of this function call. Add the keyword async before starting the body of this function. Just add the keywords at this moment. I am going to explain what the, they mean soon. So for now, just add the keywords and load the app. Tap on the button and this time you notice that the loader appears. If you take a look at the console, you will notice that the first print statement is getting printed. And if you tap on this button on the app bar, you will notice that the widget, the new page appears too. If you go back, you will notice that the loader is still there. And take a look at the console. You will notice that once the second, once the function completes its execution, the second print statement will be executed and then the loader disappears and the value returned by the function is displayed on the UI. So as we have used a synchronous function in this case, this does not block the UI and the app continue to behave normally. And thus, whenever we need to perform any HTTP request, whenever we need to perform any interaction with the database or any interaction with the file system, we have to use asynchronous function. Now we know the difference between a synchronous function and an asynchronous function, right? And an asynchronous function does not block the execution. A synchronous function blocks the execution. So if we have some code and in between we have a call to a synchronous function, then the execution will wait here until the completion of this synchronous function and after completion of this function only the next statement below this function call will be executed but if we have a call to an asynchronous function here then the code below it below this call will start executing immediately and the code of this asynchronous function will be executed parallelly so here we should have some kind of a mechanism to access the final result of this asynchronous function right so in that the future the class future is that mechanism so using future a, an asynchronous function provides us the final result that it gets after completing its task so whenever you call an asynchronous function it will give you an instance of the class future and this is kind of a promise that take this future this instance of future at this moment we don't have any data but we'll take some time to complete the task and whenever the data the task completes whenever the, we get the final data we shall put that data inside this instance of future or if any error occurs then we shall put the information of the error inside this future so keep looking for data or error inside this future instance so whenever we call this asynchronous function this will give us such a future and we have to keep looking for data or error inside this future instance now you may have this question in your mind that if asynchronous function does not block the execution and if the code below the call to an asynchronous function gets executed immediately then why this second print statement here inside this function did not get executed immediately and why the loader did not stop immediately. Now in this case this happened because of this keyword await and don't worry we shall come to this later. Now take a look at this function fun async. So we are returning the result of this function compute right we are using this function compute to execute this function long running task asynchronously thus the return type here is future of type int if you take a look at the return type of this function compute you will notice that it returns a future and this is returning a future because this is going to execute this this function asynchronously and the final result that we get we, we shall get it through the future and thus it is a ret the return type is future of type int now inside this main.dart file, inside this function, if you remove this keyword await and async, you will notice that we get an error here because this function is returning a future, but we are trying to assign it to an int. So instead of doing this, let's create a future and let's assign the result to that future. And now we don't have this error. Now if you run the app and tap on this button, you will notice that this second print statement, the one below this function called to gets executed immediately and the loader to gets hidden immediately. So this is happening because we are calling this asynchronous function and this time we are not using await here, 
right? So the SN cross as the SN cross functions does not block the UI, does not block the execution, the code below it to getting executed immediately. And now at some point in future, once this function completes its task, the value will be available, the integer will be available inside this future. It will this function has returned this future so we shall get the final integer inside this future so how can we get that we can use the callback function then of the class future so if we call then to this function then we have to pass the callback function which we want to get executed whenever the whenever this asynchronous function completes its task so this function will have one parameter and this is this will be the type that we are actually expecting from this ascent cross function in this case an integer and that will be available through this parameter so inside this function we can perform whatever we want with that value the value that we get from the ascent cross function so in this case try printing this value if you run the app if you try to tap on this button you will notice that the first print statement gets executed this print statement gets executed and then finally we see this print statement getting executed where we actually get the value the result of this function so the second print statement here is printing only the existing value of this variable but here we are getting the final result and on the ui as we are not calling set state here as we are not updating the ui we are seeing the the previous value the existing value we are not the actual result of the asynchronous operation is not getting displayed on the ui so to do that we can call set state here inside this callback function and here we can update the value of this variable and this will make the changes appear on the ui so using this callback function then of future we can access the value the result of the asynchronous function but sometimes using callback functions reduces the readability of your code because as we are more comfortable in thinking and in writing in synchronous way it would be better if we can write this asynchronous functions if we can if we can write the code in in such a way that it looks like synchronous though it is asynchronous and for that we have the keywords as await and async so if you uh, use the keyword await in front of the function call to an asynchronous function it will wait there until the completion of the function so you have already seen it right if we use the keyword await then the code below it does not get executed immediately so in this case we don't want this function to block the ui we don't want it to block the execution of the complete app we don't want it to freeze our app freeze our ui right but if you think of this function only inside this function the code below this function call depends on the result of this function so here inside this function we can wait in this statement right we can wait here until its completion because if we wait here we shall get the final result and then we can use that below to print the value and to update the UI so here it complete it makes sense if we wait here until the completion of this function so for that we can add the keyword await here and when you use the keyword await you have to mark the function as asynchronous using the keyword async before starting the body and as you are waiting here for the completion of this function you will get the final result thus this time you don't need to assign it to a future instead you can assign it directly to the variable of of the same of the same type as the result of this asynchronous function so here in this case we can assign it to this variable which is an integer so i hope this makes sense future is the way to get the data get the result of an asynchronous function and an async and await makes dealing with future dealing with asynchronous function a little convenient